Hello, welcome to a new episode of New Media Tech. And this week we're going to talk about what I've been trying to keep a secret for a while. Uh, it's not a secret no more. And we also are going to talk about uh, gates and compressions and we're going to show you what they do and how they work. Uh, all that's coming up right after this. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let's couple of weeks. Well, a couple of things I want to talk about first before we go too far here. Um, we've mentioned, uh, in the past about uh, our YouTube channel, and this is the, really the last week that I'm going to have to remind you about this because next week, uh, the show will only be up on the new channel. So, uh, first what we want to do is we want to tell you about the new YouTube channel. We are moving all of our channels. So we had, uh, seven or eight different YouTube channels, one for each show. Uh, we're moving them all into one show for Tech Zen TV, and it is youtube.com slash TV, just like you see on the lower third. And if you are still watching us, not on that channel, on the old channel, then you need to go there. Uh, this week is, so this is your final notice. Well, I'll give you one more notice before I go today, but is your final notice to get over there and to subscribe. Now we're concerned because we don't have as many subscribers on the new channel as we would have on all the old channels, uh, subscribers combined, which may be okay because you may be subscribed to multiple channel of the other channels and you only need to subscribe once, but we just want to make sure that we're not leaving anybody behind in that process. And, you know, it's the whole no one left behind thing. So, all right, this is episode number 18. Uh, I almost want to call it the barely legal one, but I think I might get in trouble if I call it the, the episode, the barely legal one, because it is episode in number 18. So uh, we have a couple things that I want to talk about this week. And not that not a lot has happened. Well, it's a couple of things that happened since last week. So last week we our video came out and we actually used the Wirecast version of it. Now we had some audio problems, um, but we decided to go ahead and do it anyways because we want to work through them. So we're going to continue to work through the Wirecast as much as we can. We still are recording in multiple locations and we will continue to do that even after we get the Wirecast issues worked out. So if you watched last week's episode uh, in the post show, like on YouTube or on the website, or you downloaded it and you heard some audio popping, we were actually clipping. Uh, and it seems Wirecast is very sensitive to uh, hitting anywhere close to that upper edge. So uh, we have hopefully adjusted for it this week. And that kind of goes along with what we're going to talk about in a little bit with compression and why we use the compression uh, so that doesn't happen. The other thing we were trying to figure out is I think we're having some weird lighting issues with some, we makes our video very soft. And uh, even if I watched it on the ProRes recording that we make on the uh, RAM drives, then it's still very soft. And we added some lights recently behind me uh, to kind of light shoulders. I'm not using them today. So today we're not using them just to see what the results are and see if that really is our problem. Looking at it right now, it looks like the video is really crisp and clear, but we'll see when we're done recording if that still is the case. We didn't notice the softness so much last week during the recording process, but we saw it afterwards when we rendered it out. So we're trying to figure out where that problem is. Um, and that's why if you don't see any backlight on me this week, uh, that's why we're just trying to experiment. We're also confirming that the little, uh, what looks like a lens flare from those lights is probably from those lights. We've we've wrapped them around with uh, different kinds of diffusion and we still seem like we're having uh, some issues there. So uh, that's something that's kind of changed a little bit as well. Uh, yeah, if you really look at my ears, uh, you can see I'm wearing something different because my normal in ears, one on my right side, I lost a driver. So I'm using the older E5s in this week which still sound awesome. So it's no big deal. All right. So this last couple weeks, I have been uh, hinting on some changes we have coming up on our, our network or our show or, or whatever. And this week I'm not going to hint any longer. Now I will say uh, what I'm going to talk about is not a hundred percent yet. I was hoping it was hundred percent this by this past Monday. Uh, by this past Wednesday, I mean, and it's just not quite there. It's there, but uh, there's some finishing touch with my web designer still working on on the front page. So here is basically what we're changing. Um, to this point, TechZen has been the content producer as well as the distributor or the network that distributes them. And uh, we probably, we picked the TechZen network because we're 
I'm a technology person. So we like the whole doing the technology shows, but we want to branch out to doing other types of shows. Actually, we tried doing another type of show um, back during American Idol, um, and it just doesn't fit on tech and TV because it's not a tech show, and it's very hard to market. So what we've been doing is on the side is creating another network, and it's called Elixa.tv, and it is basically a more like a network. So if you think about traditional broadcast, and uh, they typically have their shows are made by other studios. So um, I'm trying to think uh, a good example was Fringe was made by the the, the Bad Robot Studio, and it was played on a, a broadcast network. So in those cases, it happens about a couple of ways. The network may go to somebody and say, we want to do this show, and can you produce it for us? And they'll pay a studio to do the work. They may do use their own studios, but typically their own studios are only pretty much for the most part news these days. But they'll go to some studio and they'll they'll give them so much money to create this and produce this show. And they may do a revenue split with the ads. They may give them a fixed rate uh, and a budget to follow. And then there are times a studio will go in to a broadcast network and say, hey, we have this show we want to put on. What do you think? And, you know, they basically have to agree on the terms and everything. Money, tr- you know, transfers hands and all that. And uh, they, you know, the ratings go back and forth. It, it's a whole, it's a whole community. It's basically communication between two different entities and sometimes there's more than more than one entity there's times sometimes you have a studio and a casting company uh working together uh or a studio will bring in a casting company and do the casting and it still goes to the network as one package basically so looking at it from that point of view we're thinking like well why just don't we do that so we'll look at tech zen as being the studio and we're still going to be the content producers um we're going to sort of produce the same content we already have but what we're going to do is we're going to allow alexa to be the distrib- distribution of it so Nothing's really going to change. You're not really going to see much change. If you come to TechZen, you click on live, you're still going to see the show live. You're going to see the chat room. But the live will point to the Elixir TV uh, channel versus the TechZen. So if you go there to TechZen and click on live, it may be an Elixir TV show that's not from TechZen at some point. And we're going to try to work out how to do that on the website so that the live is live whenever it's TechZen uh, versus you know an Elixir, Elixir program. So we did it, the show we did. Uh, before actually we have a couple of shows that we did before that weren't really technology based are going to move to the Alexa network and we'll come off our website no big deal there and you're going to miss the american idol thing eh, who cares what this allows us to do though is the Alexa tv network it already has five new shows planned and there's two more that we're trying to get figured out to come onto the network that are not technology based now there's still two more shows coming on tech zen that are technology based um, actually there's more than two. There's two that are already been recorded. We're still recording the first three episodes. We don't release a show to get three episodes and we work through most of the kinks. And then also it'll show up on the website with three episodes. It's just how it's our, our, uh, how you want to call that the beta program <laughs> of a show. So we have two shows and we just recorded the third episode of the one and the other one is being recorded, uh, tomorrow. The third episode is tomorrow. And at that point, those two shows will come live on the text and, uh, page. And then we have two more shows that you want to do and we'll, you know, put them on the tech end. but the other shows are non-technology. We have, um, well, we have a family one, uh, one about marriage and family that we're trying to bring on right now. Actually it'll come on, it'll come on in the fall because the people who are doing it, um, are, uh, going through some changes with, uh, jobs and stuff. So they, before they won't get all that done before they start anything new. So that's planned for the fall. We are also going to do a, uh, uh, an, uh, training institute, uh, one that's not it's not based on technology as well, and there's uh, uh, we're trying to do a homeschooling one. We have some people trying to do homeschool, uh, and that's pretty much that's pretty close to being uh, ready to start going. So it'd be for more uh, homeschool parents, uh, from my understanding. Uh, I don't know a lot about the homeschool environment, but that's kind of what they're shooting for is the uh, homeschool parenting. That's uh, my my impression. Uh, and let's see what else was there coming up. Uh, we have a fantasy sports show uh, that we're trying to get started before football season. So that's going to be starting up here, hopefully very soon, since uh, next week uh, football's teams go to uh, training camp. So uh, it's getting a little close for that, and that will hopefully be taken off here uh, much sooner than later. And we have a couple more shows uh, in the list there as well. I can't remember what they all were that we're uh, bringing to the Elixir TV network, in- including we like to do some more uh, fan-based shows as well. Um, it's a little late to start Big Brother, but this would have been a good year because Big Brother this year, I don't want to say, uh, I don't want to say it sucks. It's still interesting, but it's a, it's a more difficult year than normal. 
And uh, but it would have been a good year to be a fan cast for that. And it's just too late to start that. And uh, unfortunately, that's one of my guilty pleasures is uh, watching Big Brother. So, uh, but that's the kind of thing we want to do on the on the new network. So that's the whole thing. The new network will also, if you have a show that you want to bring onto the network, we're open to that. So. Uh, yes, we want some shows we want to produce uh, and put on, but and some people that we know want to do shows, and that's how this is all all coming. But if you have a show yourself, and maybe you're just doing audio, but you want to go to the video, and you just don't know how to get it to that point, or you need somebody to help pr- uh, create it for you, then we, we'll do production production as well. Like do the actually be the producer uh, as far as content and everything goes. We don't really want to do that if we don't if it's your show that we'd rather you do the content. We were about the technical side, you were about the content side. And that seems like it works really well. Uh, We had the facilities to do up to three remote guests right now. And if we have to go more, we can go more. We are in this process of doing this. We are also doing uh, phone lines where people can call in. Uh, It looks like it's going to be six lines. uh, It's a maximum six lines, initially starting out at least. Uh, We can provide you with a chat room. We provide you with the streaming. Uh, We provide you with all the production of the video and putting it up onto the the stream. All that stuff will be done from our side as uh as being the producer part of it so uh we have a lot of these tools kind of built in and our whole goal is to if you have something you that get you want to do but you don't really have the technical ability to do it or you don't uh you don't want to have the technical ability to do it i mean as the way i should put it you don't want to worry about it that's when you come to us then you have, you can focus on the guests the commentary all the creative sides of it and uh we can deal with the technical side of it so uh, we definitely are open to that, and we're working out all the details with that. It'll be on the website. It's not there yet because we're still trying to write up, trying to describe it all, because I went through it very quickly right there uh, as far as oh, what we're trying to do, but we're going to try to describe it in more detail and even give you a way to um, request that a show be put on the show or be put on the network as well. So we're not looking at the, just to be our shows. It'll be always things that we typically produce. We're not going to be a directory. We're not going to be able to use Can't Send Your Podcast and it'll go up. It's going to have to go through our production cycle uh, to get it there. But if you have a show that maybe you have an idea for a show and you even have some friends that want to do it, you just don't know how to get it there and don't want to worry about um, going and getting all the equipment to get uploaded to YouTube and distribution of it through uh, the iTunes and the tracking of the performance, all that stuff. If you, ha- if you have an idea for a show and you think you can, can get the people to do it with you, let us know. We would like to work with you on it. I mean, there's not a guarantee you're gonna, we're going to want to put you on our network, but um, we are in that process of, you know, we're very open to putting shows on our network. Of course, it has to be, you know, fairly clean. It can't be anything that's really raunchy or like that. I and mean, we'll, that's kind of our decision to make when we come in is, does it uh, does it violate any kind of, you know, now, uh, laws, first of all, but, but is it is it too far out there as far as um, just in the, I don't want to even call it weird. I don't mind weird shows. I, I like weird shows, especially if it's funny. Um, but is it, you know, is it questionable as far as content? Like if a kid would see it, would they be uh, really upset by seeing it? That type of thing. So we, we do definitely want to be very careful from that point of view, but we're very open to all kinds of content. Uh, I'll give you some ideas of some of the things that we're talking about right now. In fact, if any of those shows you're interested in, um, you know, let us know. Maybe we can get you in contact with the people who are doing the show because I know some of them are still looking for um, either co-host or guest on those shows as well. All right. So that was the news we've been talking about. Uh, and a lot more of this will come. If you go to the Alexa.tv network, uh, Alexa.tv website, you'll start seeing it. The front page is still having some some problems and my designer is still working on it. So depending on when you watch this show, it may be farther along or it might not be. I was hoping that it was completed by now, but he's just um, running into some problems. But um, otherwise the content is already there. Um, the, the other thing by going on the network, you're going to be able to, you'll be able to on our new Roku app for that network. Plus we are in the process. We stopped working the, the, the tech Zen iPad, iPhone and uh, Android apps when we decided to do this because we figured we'd put it on that network. So, um, you also will be able to be on those networks as well, uh, as well as on devices as well. So your show will be on this whole network, well, um, just by, you know, being affiliated with the, with this network. So that's just something, uh, I wanted to give you finally <laughs> the news and that we had that network. Uh, well, it's working now, uh, but just the web pages, front pages have some issues. All right. So this week, what I want to do is we've had this question a lot. And I try to answer an email a couple of times and I don't think I'm doing it justice. And that is how, what a gate and compression 
is, does, how to set it. I've had all kinds of weird questions uh, about different sides. Or not, not, not really weird questions. I've had all kinds of questions uh, from different sides of it. Like, what do I use it? When do I want to use it? How do I want to set it up? And et cetera, et cetera. So this week, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you um, how you can set up compression. So we actually use compression and gates on our soundboard. We run a Behringer X32. The nice thing about the X32 is it has interfaces on Windows, Mac, iPads. Um, so you probably can control it from anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and show you my screen of the X32 as I do compression and you can see what it's doing to the audio. So I think it's a, it's a great way visually to show you what compression does. So before I do that, let me turn off all compression because we do use compression, but I gotta be very careful when I talk now because I can very quickly go and start peaking some audio. So I am now 100% totally uncompressed. Now we do not compress on an individual channel basis. So let me hop over here. And this is the X32 interface on the Mac. And it looks exactly the same as it does on the PC. It's, just, it's exactly the same, there's no difference. But um, I have no compression turned on right now, and uh, we use compression, but we use it in the group level. So you see over here on this bottom right, if you see where my mouse is moving down here, we use this group as our vocal. So all four microphones, including Skype, go through this, this right here. And um, I'm going to turn on compression like that, and you can see it's starting to turn me down. So um, if I look at it on the meters in front of me, I see I'm now not peaking, not even in danger of peaking. Uh, audio wise, but when I turn this compression off, um, I get very, very close to in the peak range. Um, I'm not actually hitting the peak range, but I'm getting a lot closer to it. So you can hear the difference in my voice, but what I want to do is I recently turned that off is I want to go to an individual channel, which I'm in this channel. I'm in this channel right here. This is Mike, my channel. And um, this is the overall right here. So you see, I have the gate right here. And you see when I stop talking, the gate goes down, just like that. And then you have the compression right here. And I'm going to turn this back on again. So now the compression is back on again. And you see it's turning me down. So basically what these two things do is they turn or turn down the audio level on a microphone. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to first go to a gate. I'll turn the compression back off again. And the reason you use a gate is for background noise. So let me, let me give you an example. I'm going to actually play in the background uh, some music. Let me get it up here. And I'm just going to go through, I'm going to scroll down and randomly pick a track. Let's see, right there. All right. Okay, so you see now the gate opens. So let me turn this down a little bit. And as I talk, you can see that you can hear it in the background, but it is not loud enough to open the gate up. So if you had a fan in the background, for example, or an air conditioner or a heater or a computer running with a, running a fan, you would adjust your gate so that it would not turn on just by that noise. Now you hear the noise in the background, so it's definitely there. Now you typically don't have something that noisy. I got it turned up pretty loud, but if I turn it down far enough, you can barely hear it. And if I get quiet, you can't hear it at all. So it just helps cover it up. So my voice is covering up. It's still playing in the background. It's not as loud as I had it a second ago, but you can still hear it kind of playing in the background. So here's how you do a gate. And there's a couple options for a gate. And I'm going to go through here and I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to go to the gate interface, which is right here. And you see, I have a couple of options. I have a threshold and then I have a range and then I can do some attack and release and release things as well. So the typical way you use to set a, uh, a gate is you adjust the threshold and the threshold is basically where does the gate turn off or when does it start turning you off again? So what you'd really want to do is you'd want to not talk and then you turn the threshold until it actually opened back up again. All right, so there it opened back up and it's staying open. Well, it's closed because you hear the music changing it. So I'm going to go up, basically be one notch on most compressors. So 
So that's where you typically would set it. Now, um, I typically go a little bit farther than that. And that's mainly because I tend to tap a little heavy on the keys. So if, if me setting it a little bit higher, I can type without it bothering somebody. So that's, that's just me. You, the general way you do it is you would go up one notch past where it turns off. And you can see it's still working fine. Now, like I said, my threshold, I generally set a little bit higher than that. And it's also how you, it's also a mic technique. So if you're a, a close proximity mic person, then you can turn it up a little bit higher because you typically have a, a little bit uh, more of a, a volume there. So um, you kind of hear when I spoke, I see, like a pause for a second, it gets kind of weird because it cuts the back off. That's because I have my um, release time very fast. I could take this release. And now it won't turn off as quickly. Watch when I stop talking. So it's less likely when I pause to be annoying. So you really have to adjust that. Um, you, I like it faster, but I typically have a very quiet room. If you're not in a very quiet room, you probably want to be a little faster because it's going to get very annoying to the listener because they're going to keep hearing this on off, on off, on off. And so I'm going to go back down though. You see how fast, well, watch when I stop talking, watch how slow it goes down. It's basically 1,051 milliseconds. So let's go back down to like a 200, which is fast. Not, not super fast, so we can leave, we'll leave it there. So next thing is how long do you want it to stay open when it opens up? So you see when I stop talking, it doesn't go down right away. It takes it just a split second. Actually it takes it exactly 316 milliseconds. So we're gonna go ahead and decrease this like this. And it's very fast now. So it could still be a very slow release. Like, let me go over and bring the release back up again. But it starts going down immediately as soon as I'm done talking. So um, you really have to figure out what works best for your sound. I mean, I kind of know where um, I generally am. I keep a lot longer hold like this. So I don't... Okay. Let me back this back up a little bit. So I kind of like like that. Now I typically have a, again I have a very quiet room. Um, you know the room's in surrounded in foam, so um, I don't typically have to worry about the background sound and the cutting off and on. So that's why I make it so fast. But it really depends on your environment. I mean, the best thing to do is record yourself with all these different settings and figure out which one sounds the best. So when you're recording it, um, you know, basically you read off what you have your different settings to. Now not all of them have tell you exactly in milliseconds depending on what kind of compressor using a physical physical compressor, it's just going to be a compressor. Physical compressor, it's just going to be knobs and you have to adjust it to figure out where it's at. Um, so now this particular board has the, also the ability to do based on a particular uh, frequency range. So I could set uh, a gate based on a particular filter, a uh, key filter, uh, which would be affected, you know, on a particular frequency range, like a thousand, like a thousand hertz, two thousands, you know, about the middle of your voice typically uh, for most people. So um, also the attack is kind of like uh, the opposite of release. So it's how fast does it turn off? You see when I start talking, it goes up pretty quickly. If I increase it, it'll get slower and slower. Uh, you typically want this to be huh, low, real low, because you don't want your words to be cut off you know, when you first start talking. So. All right, so that is uh, a quick look at what a gate does. So now we're gonna look at compression. And this whole time uh, I've been doing compression, have I, my compression been turned on or off? Let's go look here real quick. My compression is turned off. So uh, hopefully I didn't clip too much and get my clicking popping noises in there. All right, so let's go look now at the the dynamic, the the comp the uh, compression. So let's go back to the home screen here. The home screen gives you like, everything that's going on. You see compression is not turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. So there, compression is turned on. So basically what compression does is it, it turns, uh, for the simplest terms, it turns you down <laughs> based on uh, a certain percentage uh, or ratio over a certain level, um, it'll start to turn you down and it, it really does some, it does some, 
they call it a compressor because what it allows you to do is it allows you to keep the soft things loud, but when things get louder, um, a lot louder, you can start and keep them in proportion to what um, is going out. So you look over here and you see this little thing is going down. This is how far it's turning me down. Now I'm actually going to go look at the dynamics page. And because here are those numbers, and it's telling you right here, it's turning me down 6 dB when I'm speaking. So there's a couple of things you have in here. Uh, first of all, you see up here, we have the release, the hold, and the attack. It's like we just exactly like we had uh, in, the, in the gate. They do the, exactly the same thing. But you also have this gain. So what happens with the compressor is it's making you quieter. So sometimes you need to, to get past that and you need to turn yourself back up again. Now I need to be careful here because I do this, it's going to go ahead and start clipping again. But um, you need to adjust. So if somebody's in compression all the time, they're always going to be lower volume than what they are without the compression. Just like if I turn this off, you can see how much louder I get. So I get a lot more energy through. So you may have to come in and turn this up because you're losing a little bit of that energy. Now, you see how far is this negative six compression? That's probably more than what you would normally want to do. I call it tickling the compressor. So you typically want to adjust this threshold so that, I'm going the wrong direction, there we go. So that you're just tickling it. I'd go a little bit more than I could typically go between two and four dB uh, down on a, just a regular voice level. All right, let's see. That's still probably a little bit light, but it's not bad. I mean, it's probably, it's probably okay, right there. That's probably perfect. Um, so you have this threshold. This is where it takes, so at 32 dB, when I go over 32 dB, it's going to start turning me down two and a half times for every one time it goes up. So if you look at it from the point of view as a decibel, if I go a decibel over this 32, what's going to happen is it's going to turn me, so I go to 33 decibels, it's going to turn me down two and a half decibels for that. So I basically will be, um, you know, basically a 1.5 times lower than what I would have been without the compression. So, and the more you go over, the more, you know, the more it's going to turn you down. So if I go over by four, it's going to be a two to one ratio. So for every four I go over, uh, we're going to turn it down 1.5. So that would be uh, six decibels down. So just a way of keeping the volume level without, so if I get really loud, like I'm, getting, I'm starting to get really loud right there, and you see it's turning me down, and I'm not clipping and nothing, so it's keeping me at a, a decent volume level. So that's what, comp that's what compression does. So uh, you have some uh, choices here. A typical ratio uh, for a vocal, I would say, is two and a half to three if you're speaking vocal. Uh, if you're doing somebody that's on a stage that, got, uh, that gets animated a lot, keep it at three because you don't want them coming in and and uh, clipping uh, or getting too loud and hurting people's ears. So this is, this is where you can get through and help that. Now, here's some things about compression. Because lower uh, frequencies have more energy, they typically make it through and the higher ones don't. So what you'll notice, so when you turn this off, you get a little more clarity in my voice. And that if you over compress somebody, I'm going to, and I'm going to do this here to show you what happens. I'm going to turn the compression back on again, and I'm going to overcompress me. So now I'm really overcompressed. And I don't know if you can actually even hear me very well, but you see a lot of this clarity in my voice is gone because the highs are just being crushed out. So you got to be very careful, and that's what happens when you get too much compression. Uh, if you use compression as a safety, and I'm going to show you another way that you use compression. I mentioned this when I first started. I typically do not put compression on any of these microphones down here. What I do is I turn them off the compression here and I go in, I put everybody into a group. And then in that group, let me go to compression and turn it on. Now the audio group itself, everybody in this group is compressed. So I use that more as a safety that we don't clip. So we're all coming into the same compressor. So we're all talking and the louder we get, you know, the more energy you get coming in through different channels, the more energy you get that goes out. And this is how we protect ourselves. And you see, I'm pushing it two to four, I even occasionally go up to six. Um, and it's, uh, I said between two and four, and this is one instance where I, I, I go to six because I just like the protection that it's giving me. You also notice that I'm doing a ratio of three to zero, which is why I'm probably going to six because I pretty much had the same threshold as I had on the individual mic over here. It just now I'm doing a little bit, a little bit more of this uh, compression. So 
uh, I do this in a group. It just makes more sense because if otherwise you have different people talking different volumes, the compressions compete with each other. It just sounds weird. So the best thing to do is take all these and put them into a group over here and do individual um, compression on them. So then to make it the question, well, why don't you do individual? Why don't you do a gate the same way? Well, you can. However, it doesn't serve the same. Uh, it doesn't do work exactly the same because if you use the gate only here, you can have somebody open up a microphone and another one having noise next to it and a fan, you're still going to get it. So I do gate individual channels, but I compress it through this group over here. And uh, this is, again, the compression is just, it's, I've tried doing the compression individually and it just doesn't work very well, especially because here's what happens when you get people in studio sitting side by side with microphones is one microphone will open wide open and it's really sent you got turned up really loud because you want you have compression working you know really a lot on it but now it's overly sensitive to somebody sitting next to it so you get this echo effect between microphones which is also another reason why uh you do individual gates and that's also the reason why my gate is set so high is if i'm sitting in a room like uh see so i don't have one here to show but you know i have this microphone and if i had a guest sitting here and they were sitting here and the microphone's facing this direction if the gate was combined and he opened the gate up, he'd be echoing through this mic. And the other thing is with the compression on this mic and on this mic, this mic, if he's talking on this one, it's going to start turning him down. This mic's not going to turn him down because he's not loud enough yet. So it's going to seem very loud coming through this one, which causes this weird roomy echo effect. So that's why you don't want to compress individual mics, especially when they're in a studio together. So if I grab one of my mics over here from that our other guest use and sit here, we would have that problem. And the, the gates, I set them higher so that he isn't triggering this gate. So that's part of the reason. The problem with that is you got to have good mic technique. you got to stay you know, fairly close to the mic because you need the energy to get it opened. And you got to remember that you have to have that energy to get it open because if you don't, you're going to get a lot of uh, weird cuts in and cuts out. And if that happens, the only thing you can do is turn the gate back. So the other option you have, if you have guests like that, is you can spread them out, obviously. Uh, in here, sometimes we have three or four people, so we can't spread out too far. We only got uh, eight feet here pretty much to sit and talk with each, with each other, uh, at least so we are all facing the camera. Unless we put somebody out in the other room at the control station, uh, which works, we do it sometimes, you know, works this as well. However, uh, it's just easier if you just adjust the gate and the compression. So... Uh, it takes if you if you start to play with compression and you put everybody the different compressor on each person's mic uh, and you start having this weird roomy effect, that's what it is. Don't do that. <laughs> In fact, it's actually if you're gonna buy a compressor, just buy one compressor. Uh, if your soundboard has an insert or a group out, like I was just mentioning, put that through the compressor and then bring it back into the board and use that to do all the compression. And if you don't have a gate, you can probably get away without a gate. A lot of people get away without a gate. Um, it just helps clear the noise. And again, if you're sitting in side by side in a room, you want to bring the gate up uh, a little bit more probably than just that first notch. So you want the person next to you triggering your gate to go off. So um, let's see. Let's go back over here and see what else I can cover while I have you here. Um, so I get this question I get while I'm in here about EQ too. So one of the things you're going to notice is uh, things in here are, this is EQ'd. However, it's not turned on. So let me go ahead and turn on the EQ. So now the EQ is on. So you saw the difference in what the EQ did. And what it's doing really is dropping down this uh, 200 low part. And uh, this is probably something we use for a singer. Because sometimes in this part of your voice, especially a female singer, can get this little uh, rumbly sound in this area. So that's probably what we had uh, adjusted. Now let me come and see. It's number one. And... Let's see, where are we? As I get rid of this, you'll start seeing my voice come back up. So this is the boomy part of your voice, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just adjust the frequency. So you can see what each frequency part does. So I mentioned before, this is like the main part of people's voices right in through here, one and two. So you see as I come up here, that's like the body of your voice, most people's voice. And then you get up in this part. This is where the clarity starts to kick in. Well, female voices can be up as high. Um, and then up in here, you start getting the clarity. And then you start getting the whiss sound. Right there's the whiss part, you know, on 8K. And it goes on up from there. And then you on down at the bottom, you get the, the bassy sound. <laughs> I don't even got just my voice for this. And you can see it goes on down from like that. And then below 40, typically most things don't react below 40. Uh, the human ear 
can hear it, or it's more of a feel at that point. So once you've got subs, you're probably not really going to going to notice that very much. But uh, what you'll notice is um, for speaking mics, we don't use any EQ because uh, we actually have the microphones we like and we call it sound. If we didn't, we would be not using these microphones. So, uh, and we have three different kinds of microphones. So we kind of pick what person sounds best or what they like to sound like on each one of them. We don't do any EQ, you know, for our shows. Now, when we do record music in the studio, we use EQ. But uh, more recently, we've actually been recording um, off the X32. We can record all 32 channels, uh, Firewire or USB, uh, into a uh, DAW. And we actually do most of the EQ in there. So we pretty much use it flat most of the time. we got this really nice EQ in here. And when we do it in the studio, we pretty much don't even use uh, the EQ. It's pretty much flat for almost everything we do. We do have uh, maybe one microphone that we don't like how it sounds. It's really bottom end low. And uh, we do kind of trim that off. But... I think that's the only microphone that we have that does that. And uh, we don't use it very often, only when we're short microphones. So we kind of set it aside. So um, I hope that answers the question about EQ. And there's some programs you can download for PC and Mac. I don't know any off the top of my head um, that aren't full DAWs, but there's a couple of them out there that will do some EQ. And uh, it does this visually. So it allows you to play with different options. Uh, so you can kind of learn what the EQ does. But... Again, we like our microphone sound, so we typically do everything totally flat. And we don't do anything uh, post either. So we don't go in and change anything in post. We pretty much drop it in the audio the way it comes out of the board. And then we record it, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, all right. I think I pretty much covered everything that I wanted to cover for today. Uh, it took me a little longer than what I thought it was going to. I do want to remind you uh, one more time that this is the last week we will be on the old YouTube channel. Starting on the next show, we will only be on the new YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TexNTV. So if you haven't gone there and subscribed yet, please do. Um, I haven't checked today, but we are getting more subscribers. I think we're well over 1,000 now, but we had well over 1,000 on all the other ones too, so I don't know if... Um, you people have subscribed to multiple channels or house working, but I just want to make sure we don't lose anybody in the transition because this will be the last show that shows up on this older YouTube channel. All right. A couple other things while I'm still here, uh, you can go get any of our show notes at newmediatech.tv or you can just go to tech-zen.tv and get show notes from there as well. Um, also you can uh, follow us on Twitter. It's at tech TV. We also combined all of our Twitter channels into tech Zen TV uh, just so it's easier to keep everybody updated. And we are starting to use hashtags. So something you'll start seeing next week probably is hashtags will be actually on the, uh, on the screen telling you what hashtag, uh, to use. Uh, again, I am, uh, Mike Myers and uh, we do this show every Monday night. We do it live at 8 PM. We definitely welcome questions. You can always send questions to text or to new media tech at tech TV. And, uh, we'll, try to answer them on the show. That's kind of what happened tonight. People are asking questions about when to use gates and compressions or how to use them or what do they do? I've had all kinds of different questions about them. And uh, I just wanted to cover that the best that I could. And I thought visually would make more sense because I can show it to you on the, on the computer screen, basically, and let you listen to what's happening, happening live. All right. Uh, that is it for this week uh, for new media tech. We'll see you all next week. Mm.